All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. In this episode, I'm joined by Rodrigo Cuesta. He's a medical doctor and surgeon who could not find a good job despite having a great CV. And this led him to entrepreneurship and he founded his first company in telehealth. He sold that company and blew 50% of the money trying to invest in different things with leverage. But the rest of the money was invested in a venture studio that eventually also got acquired. All of that reward was converted into Bitcoin and Rodrigo never looked back. He stopped being a speculator and is now following a low risk strategy to accumulate more Bitcoin. I love this story. We randomly met on Twitter. And so I'm really excited to, to talk with him today. So uh, welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, again, my first podcast ever, but I just want to send a message, a good message to humanity. Um, let's see how it goes. Yeah, man, I, I'm honored that this is your first podcast. So thanks so much for, <laughs> for coming on. Thank I, you. Uh, yeah, as, as I mentioned in the intro, we, we virtually met two months ago when I posted uh, a tweet asking for a late minute guest because someone else canceled. And you replied with, I sold my company for a few million and converted it all to Bitcoin. Well, that obviously <laughs> triggered me. <laughs> so again, I'm happy that you're here today. Uh, but yeah, let's let's jump into your journey. How did you get into Bitcoin in the first place? Because you were into Bitcoin before I understood, right? Yeah. Um, so way back 2014, I had a friend, in fact, in the Netherlands. He was doing Bitcoin mining and he was like, hey, you need to check this because I know your personality. You're a little bit of a, of a rebel. And this might interest you. So I bought my first two, but it was like from ignorance that just like, all right, I'm going to buy it. Let's see what happens. Um, and that's how I started. Then obviously at that point in my life, I was trying to survive. Um, I guess it's the normal story of everyone. You try to do the right things. You, if you got the, get the opportunity to go to college and study, or if not, you hustling to make it happen start creating your, your cash flow. Um, and I forgot about it completely, like never pay attention ever again, because I was, as, I, as you mentioned, I'm a medical doctor surgeon. Um, I graduated in the U S it was impossible to get a decent job that I didn't fit, felt exploited, um, at the beginning. And I, at that point I came to Spain, and started my telehealth company, but yeah, it's, it's hard getting funding, getting this, getting that, um, until a point that I, I got lucky because, uh, it's, it's not easy. It's not for everyone. And I sold it to an insurance company in Mexico with 1 million users. Um, at this point I was so excited that I said, Oh, and I remember Bitcoin. So I'm going into Bitcoin, but no, um, I got delayed in my Bitcoin journey because of all the chip coins in the world and yeah. all the greed in the world because I said, and I fell for the trap. Um, yeah. Get rich quick. And so let's do this. Yeah. And so you, you started investing right with, uh, with the reward that you got, uh, in, in, yeah. in our little prep that you sent me, you said, it was mainly with leverage and you were greedy. Why do you think you, you like got into that strategy? When you look back, were, do you think you were conscious about what you're doing or not really? I mean, I knew I was taking a lot of risk, but because of what I have perceived and, and so far, um, millennials, to be honest, that we go into a career and we feel frustrated and then we feel trapped and you're not getting anywhere, although you're doing your best, which I think it's, it's supposed to be like that, right? You do your best, you get ahead, but no, you're doing your best. You're going backwards. So when I got that chunk of money, well, it was like rich quick or die again because I was <laughs> desperate. It was, it was desperation. Like I, I, I didn't know what else to do or how to handle the, the opportunity that I was given at that point. So, um, yeah, it was, 
So now I can tell you it was ignorance. At the moment was desperation. Yeah. Interesting, right? Like you work for the reward that you think you should work for, as you mentioned. And then when you, when you get the reward, you still don't realize that it, it was not luck that you did it. Right. Uh, or not only luck, you know, you mentioned luck, but I mean, like you, you build something that other people want to buy. Right. So that's not only luck. Yeah. And then you get to the point that I agree. A lot of millennials would dream about, but then you didn't, realize what to do with it it was like a new problem it wasn't it, it wasn't like you were at a destination then or something exactly and 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 this is the point where i realized my my lack of education in regards to finances and how it works and what you should do um and at this point i remember bitcoin and i, I checked the price and the first one i bought it was like i don't know four hundred dollars and it was like three thousand no, i don't remember but something like that and I was like, oh, wait, wait. So I bought it at 200, 400. Now it's 3,000. Yeah. And I didn't do anything. I just forgot about it. So I got extremely curious, like, how does this work? How does this really work? And why did I felt the, um, the urge of trying to put all the, the reward that I got into something that it's so risky without any information? Which, by the way, takes me takes me back to, I, I read a few days ago, Michael Saylor saying, you spend, I don't know how many thousands of hours working, trying to get a reward, right? And you can even spend like a hundred understanding what the reward is. And yeah. it, it got me because it's exactly what we're saying. And I, I, I lived it. I, I went through it. Um, yeah. And at this point, yeah, I blew 50% in Ethereum and those things. Um, and then getting yields, um, yeah, yeah, messed up big time. Does your Bitcoin custody setup keep you up at night? Gain peace of mind with OnRamp and their multi-institution custody solution. OnRamp creates a dedicated multi-signature vault for you and three separate institutions each hold a key, which are OnRamp, Bitco, and CoinCover. But none of them can move funds unilaterally, only you have control. These institutions can only sign with your instruction. OnRamp's multi-institution custody eliminates single points of failure, reduces your personal attack service and technical burden, and provides access to financial services that allow you to secure your Bitcoin, including inheritance planning, insurance-backed warranties for all balances and transactions, low-cost trading, and more. Check out onrampbitcoin.com through my link in the description below and receive $250 in Bitcoin when you join. If you want to self-custody your Bitcoin stack, I recommend the Foundation Passport, a premium Bitcoin-only hardware wallet. I've been using mine for about a year now, and I love the design and ease of use. And with Foundation's mobile wallet companion app Envoy, your initial onboarding is super smooth and straightforward. The Passport is fully air-gapped, which means you never have to connect it to the internet or any computer. The Passport serves as a signing device to sign transactions on your Envoy app, or any of your other favorite software wallets like Sparrow or Blue Wallet. The Foundation Passport also offers encrypted backups on a micro SD card and is built with 100% open source hardware and software. I love what Zach and the team at Foundation are building and to learn more about their mission, please check out episode 27 of this podcast. If you consider buying a Foundation Passport, you can use code BRAM, that's B-R-A-M, to get $10 off at foundation.xyz slash BRAM. Yeah, it's interesting. Everyone goes to through the shitcoin phase, almost everyone, right? Because you look at it from like a technology angle, maybe, and you think like, oh, this thing is shinier or faster or the promise of it or whatever. <laughs> but eventually, of course, with with more money, it, it, it is a more rough lesson. But But eventually everyone gets humbled a bit, right? Because... Once you, and I love what you said about being curious, right? Like once you are triggered as to, you know, why is this Bitcoin thing different? Why does it go up in price? Why is it so, why are the people that are into it so adamant about it, right? Like eventually, you know, like you orange pill yourself in a sense. And I think once you open that door of curiosity, then like, then, 
you know, your mind opens, I would say. Completely. No, completely. I agree. Um, yeah, there's, there's a thousand ways to get to Rome. Um, uh, mine was by beating myself up by losing a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Um, but mostly, and, and now I can say this, it, it wasn't the money that I was really hurt from. I was hurt from all the time that I spent trying to get to a point that I created something valuable all those hours and I just blew them and, and too quick. Like it goes so fast. Yeah. Um, and the, the analogy that I always try to, to give people when, when I'm telling or presenting myself about this story is it's, it's so hard to build a, a really good building, right? It's so hard. It takes time, um, engineering funds, hours of work, but to blow it up, it's just one afternoon. Yeah. So it was exactly the same. And that's when I, I, I got obviously depressed. Um, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I felt really trapped by the system because I always heard, all right, you make, you make a, a little bit of money, you put it somewhere, you get a I don't know, deposit on it, and then you get a yield, and that's how you survive. No, that's not really the way because – after that, I learned, well, inflation and liquidity, and this is happening. <laughs> so yeah. at the end, it was like, no, which, which ship coin of this, it's going to give you a yield. And where does that yield come from that is going to give you safety and security and something solid that you can build on? Yeah. And so far, I can tell you the only one, and there's no second best for sure, is Bitcoin. Yeah, I, uh, I I think it's interesting. I love the analogy of, you know, spending finite time, spending finite energy to, you know, deliver value and eventually receive a reward, right? And the reward is in the form of money. Well, your entire company got acquired, right? So you get a big reward in, in, in one go, which is basically all the value you created in one, you know, stack of Let's yeah. call it a package of, of, of money. But once you blew it, you, you basically threw away, maybe too harsh, but like all that time and that energy that was packaged in that reward is literally gone, right? So it, it's not only the, the units of the money that are gone, but the, what it represents for you in, in, in your situation is that, is that time and energy that you spent on, on creating that value. Exactly. Um, so it was about 50% what I blew. So I was like, oh my God, this took me X amount of years. Yeah. And then I just, I just blew half of it in three months. W w what's going on? Um, yeah. It shouldn't be that way. Um, I'm here speculating. I'm here. I felt literally in a casino. Like the only way I can do this is playing poker, or blackjack or and then I'll be able to multiply my money. That's, that's how it felt. Um, obviously, this comes from enormous amounts of ignorance, of course. But you don't get that. Um, and that's what I've been trying to express everyone else. Like, I, I don't try to orange peel people with number go up. I always tell them, try to educate yourself. And I understand that maybe at this point in your life, you don't have the time. Because you're trying to survive, you're trying to move forward, especially after 2019, 2020, we all know how, what happened. And it's going to happen again in a different way, but the printing of money is coming. Um, and then you see all your dreams further away and further away and further away. And that basically kills your human instinct of being happy and trying to do something that you really like and, and enjoy. Um, so I always try to, let's start with education. Because that was yeah. what I was really liking. Yeah. And so how do you think this, you know, I, I, I think ignorance is a good word, right? It's also not, it's also super uh, subconscious in a sense, like people are not, uh, well, some people are blissfully ignorant, right? But I don't, I don't think it's on purpose for, 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 for most people. No. How do you think like, this this feeling or our thoughts and understanding about money how how does that shape society do you think 
people are less happy than what they could be or what are your thoughts there? Yeah. Um, it, some, sometimes when you, when you put the term money and that's one of the big problems, people associate money with bad things. And I think that's a byproduct of the system. Hmm. Like don't, don't, don't chase money. That's m most countries, world cultures, middle class. They tell you don't chase money. But I think that definitely if you, if you, and I think this is, it's always redundant. And if it's Bitcoiners listening to this, they already know this and it becomes redundant, but there's certain values in society that you need to really, really feed to be able to build something powerful in life. Um, and not, not being so empiric about it. Let's, let's talk about a family, right? If you want to build a family, well, you need a, a family, in my opinion, is the center of society and that's where everything starts to blossom. But if, you, if your family can't be safe um, emotionally, financially, after you've done a great effort to provide, being um, boy or girl, whatever it is, it doesn't even matter. But you're trying to provide and create, exchange your time for that energy. And that, and that money doesn't work then you're incentivized to do what the system wants you to do, which is chase the brightest thing in the market, chase the car, chase the house, chase the girl that, you, that doesn't even value you, stuff like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely shapes and provides the, the means and the base level, main layer one, to build up a family, to build up a society. So the money that we have right now, that works right now, that it's not Bitcoin, promotes incentives of consuming, spending, and you feel good about it. And there's something internally extremely wrong about that because you should feel extremely good when you save, not when you spend everything. You know what I mean? It's, yep. it's, it's different. Well, I think it feels uh, when 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 you are like a consumer. I think that we we were both there, by the way. So we are not <laughs> we are not talking from some sort of uh, enlightened uh, point. I would say, but I think like you feel like you accomplished something. Oh, I'm doing something with my money, or you're doing what others say you should be doing. You know, whatever you're buying with the money, right? And it's always like, oh, GDP growth because people spend money. You know, a consumer. Um, how do they call it? Like consumer trust is growing and, and all these things, but consuming is not building, <laughs> you know? So exactly. if, if, if more people are consuming than there are people building, well, if eventually either the people building will get way richer than the people who are only consuming, which is obviously, uh, happening. Right. But also because you don't. Uh, you were not able to create a time and space, right? I mean, you 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 start and and uh, uh, you started and start start companies. You need to have space, which is time, right? Uh, well, time, mental space, energy to investigate a business idea, for example. And if you're only busy with you know each month, you're paying your bills, you know, uh, just trying to provide for your family, you're not able to save. Um, then you you aren't even able to create that time and space to explore whatever you want to build, right? Like it doesn't matter what you want to build, but if you're doing something that you don't enjoy, don't love, maybe hate, just to provide for your family, that does something with you internally. Yeah, yeah, and 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 especially young people. You know, uh, we're talking years ago of my experience, my first experience of blowing 50%. I didn't have a family at the moment. I didn't have a wife at the moment. Um, but I was, I was, I was concerned about it, but it's, it's not a priority. But as you just mentioned, the problem is I didn't have the time and the space to really get to know myself. And yeah. more, more specifically, what I was lacking to be able to move forward different levels in life, because you move forward in different levels in life with education, but I didn't even know 
what was missing. So it's it's like being in the dark <laughs> yeah. alley, moving in circles. Like you don't yeah, know what's yeah, going yeah. on. Hundred percent. And uh, what I think is interesting um, is that once, well, the, at least that's my experience in Bitcoin, and I think yours is similar, but. Once you go down that Bitcoin rabbit hole, which is not only about learning what Bitcoin factually is, because that is perhaps the easiest part, right? All the implications are are way deeper. All the origins, why should this even exist? What is the problem that it's solving? What does, you know, what what's the first order effect, second, third, fourth order effect of the of the problem that we're experiencing, right? I mean, like uh, what we're what we just mentioned, like the internal feeling of happiness or satisfaction of people, right? Or the the possibility to chase whatever they um, would love to build or pursue or achieve, right? That's like a third order effect, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that's that's what is so difficult to understand because when you are struggling and just trying to get by every month, wherever you live, by the way, it doesn't mean you're poor or, you know, poor by whatever standard. Um, you know, there's people in the U S who make 150 K a year and they're struggling to, uh, uh, you know, to live. So, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. is rich or whatever is poor, that's not really the point. But if you don't understand why that is happening to you, yeah, then it's 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 a big it's a big struggle, and if you don't have the space to study it, you you stay in that um, you stay in that struggle. And and I think what we see a lot is that people are are blaming other people for it. Yeah, because it's it's always easier to to point to the other side, right? It's like it's your fault, mm. it's your fault, but but you never do this. It's it's mm. my fault, and I need to do something. And I think, and and of course, all of this is my my personal opinion, but. I think that when we grow up or as we have been growing up in this system, the the thing that matters is not who you really are or what you really want. So, for example, I remember when I was going into med school, I had a lot of peers and other students that they were there just because they wanted to be called Dr. Something by a speaker in a, in a hospital, not because they wanted to treat people. <laughs> so, of course... After doing the, all the effort of getting into med school and it's hard and it's the same for me, it's the same for every career that you decide to pursue. It has to be something that comes within yourself and something, a fire, a, a light that we're, I, I think we're all born with it and you just need to discover it. Um, and I, <laughs> say that it reminds me of Bitcoin again. It was already there. We needed to discover it, but it's kind mm -hmm. of the same sensation and feeling. So, um, one of the biggest things that happened to me was my emotional health, you know, my understanding my deficiencies and why I was being so greedy and so like money driven. I mean, money's not bad, but money driven. Like I was just thinking about fiat, like the stack of fiat that I could make at certain amount of time to buy something. So someone can see me driving a car, for example, it doesn't make mm. sense. It just doesn't make sense. Um, uh, in fact, my my father-in-law is visiting me here. He's 63, 64. And I was telling him, like, there's a difference between Bitcoiners and crypto bros. And he started laughing, like, what's a crypto bro? And I started telling him the the this exact emotion that I just des um, described. And he was like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, life is not about showing off. It's about you growing as a person. And Bitcoin has been that for me. It has helped me to grow as a person, which is really hard nowadays because there's a lot of lack of guidance from whoever is trying to guide a population, a country, a school, or even a family. It's really hard. The information is not there. Um, and yeah, so Bitcoin has been... Something that helped me, as I mentioned before, graduate from the school of life, right? Like first grade, second grade, third grade, and not get stuck in fifth grade. Because I think yeah. crypto bros get stuck in third grade and they don't, they don't move from there. And there's so much more for, about life. Um, and yes, I got lucky. 
Um, I work a lot. I try to create value, solve a problem, but I, I have to be honest. When I was doing the whole thing and I was projecting my exit and what am I going to do with, with this company or even the cash flows that I was receiving from the business, all the time I was thinking, oh my God, am I ready to manage this? How, how am I going to manage the the reward that I'm receiving because I remember when I blew it up <laughs> and I was so <laughs> so petrified about it. I had PTSD about it <laughs> every night. Like, oh my goodness, this is going to happen again. And I can I can literally tell you that getting information about Bitcoin, understanding Bitcoin, which you never understand Bitcoin, it's it's forever. Um helped me develop to the person that I'm now and raise my kids as I think good Bitcoiners would. And those kids are the ones that are going to change the world. We're just raising a new generation. Yeah. What you said about Bitcoin is like, an, uh, you never really understand Bitcoin. I think that is more about, you know, what I just mentioned, these, these, these se- you know, second, third, fourth order effects. Like what does money actually touch in this world right why is broken money bad and like you know uh you know in you you mentioned incentives before like what happens when incent when money is broken incentives are broken you know that's why we uh don't have flying cars but we have you know temu shine all this fast fashion nonsense for example um but i want to check with you i think uh, what was big for me is that you know in this in this personal journey in this personal change is that Bitcoin is I want to say the only thing, but there is perhaps a bit more. But but maybe it's the only thing of which you can fully um, Im- immerse yourself in and and understand what it is. Like it's ultimately transparent, right? So. But all the other things that you can learn in the world of, of value or things that are important, you know, like fiat money, everything is obscured, abstracted, etc. And so it's very hard to form a strong opinion about things because there's always, yeah, this abstraction somewhere. But Bitcoin is super transparent. So you are able to actually form your own true opinion about it based on your study and the knowledge that you gathered, right? I think when we talk about conviction, for example, the conviction doesn't come from someone else telling you like, oh, you should, you know, Bitcoin is the shit. It's going to uh, 10 million, blah, blah. No, it's because you know, <laughs> because you exactly. study, you know what this is, right? And And I don't think there's another thing where you can reach this feeling that you can trust your own study input, you know, energy spent, whatever you want to call it. No, I, that, I, that I, really I helped agree. Me. No, I agree with you. I agree with you a thousand percent. Um, after, after my, ex, my last ex, well, experience that we just mentioned, I started building other things. And every time I got the opportunity, even it was, was cash flow. And then you start understanding, like, live below your means and don't do crazy stuff and save for tomorrow because that experience. And, and I, um, I mentioned you, like, I, I was not mad about the money. I was mad about the time I lost. So yeah. from there on, it was looking for something so clear, so transparent, so, so pure you can say pure, mm. that it would help me regain all the time that I lost because of ignorance, lack of education, greed, and others. And that was Bitcoin for me. So from there on, I started just, and I think saying buying Bitcoin, it's not the best message for non-Bitcoiners and normies. It's saving in Bitcoin is what allowed me to regain the hours I've lost and the hours of the future so I can clear my mind and really think about what, I, what makes me happy, you know, and, yes. and, and everyone's, everyone's different and I don't judge, but I like reading 
and I like being with my kids. That's what I enjoy. Maybe another person <laughs> yeah. likes going club. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Exactly. If it makes you happy. I I love what you just said. Um, you said saving for the future, and that made me think. You know what's interesting that that if you say that, a lot of people think like. Yeah, but the future is uncertain. I don't know what it's going to bring. So I'd rather spend that money now, etc. But this is the exact, you know, fiat money mindset. mindset. Mm -hmm. you, you spend it now and then I'm happy now. And if I, if, I, if I don't spend it now and I save it into the future, I don't know if I'll be happy. So I'd rather be happy now. But, but what they fail to understand and, and not on purpose again, I think is that because you can create time and space towards the future, you can actually figure out why you're here and what you enjoy exactly. and who you are, right? So it's the it's it's exactly what Save Dina Moose talks about, you know, short-term time preference, long-term time preference. You will be rewarded in the long run, but you have to take the kind of like anti-action that you think you should do and then the reward will be even bigger, you know, because your next pair of shoes, you know, who cares? Who cares? Um, I mean, yes. Um, I, 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 I fell into a trap um, because of my personality. It might happen to people too, but um, I think entrepreneurs were really intense, really our risk appetite is completely different as other people. But I fell in a trap that I wouldn't spend anything. I would just buy Bitcoin. And it's important for me to make the difference that when I say save in Bitcoin is I'm saving time for the future, but I'm enjoying myself today also because yeah. I'm living today. And when I tell this to fiat minded people, normies, they really understand that, yeah, you can have fun today. You can have a nice pair of shoes, but there's no need of having 10 different pairs of shoes or 25 watches. Yeah. So that's really important um, because you can have one, but the rest save your time in the future. So you can wear that watch in the future, doing whatever you want and being happy. That's kind of the, the message all the time. But again, um, I, I'm always impressed about it's, it doesn't even matter where you were born. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter your social, social status at the moment or in the past. It doesn't matter. We are all infected by the fiat mindset at a certain point. We're born into that. Um, and that's yeah. where uh, the matrix analogy makes a lot of sense because you were, you were born connected to that. And then you start understanding that, oh my God, the only really important thing in my life, it's my time. That's basically it. Um, how can I save it for the future? Yeah. And that's where, when, when the doors open and the rabbit hole goes bananas, because it's really interesting to, to learn all this. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I love the matrix analogy and I, I want to emphasize that it's not like it's not like a malicious thing, like there's evil people, but well, maybe there, yeah, of course there's evil people, but not like they're all, all evil. It's just a system sustaining itself, right? And literally what you said, you are born into it. That's true. I mean, I don't know how you teach your kids about uh money right but when we were young we got some coins we went to a store bought a bread Ooh, it works i don't have to ask any questions about it and i think the realization that is important to eventually get to as an adult is i never thought about it so do i understand it the honest question is no <laughs> you know and that is like the matrix uh point right because you could be like no and I'm not going to study it and I'm going to ignore it. And I don't know what inflation is, but it's hurting my life and all these things. I'm just going to ignore this whole thing or I'm going to take the, the, the red pill, right? And I'm going to see what is behind this thing that was just told to me, but I have no clue how it works. And I think that's where also that kind of curiosity comes in. But there is a point where you cannot ignore 
the information that you have, right? And that is kind of like the red, blue pill moment. Yeah, um, yeah, for for sure. Um, there's there's a caveat to that. That is that that you need to ask the point where you ask yourself, "What am I going to do in the future?" No, it's it's not like the future is uncertain. No, 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 it's like the system that I'm in. For example, when they tell you when they tell a millennial, right? Well, your pension. You really need to think about it. Like, am I going to get a pension? And when I get it, because I, I agree with you, it's it's. I don't believe it's a malicious system redesigned. No, there's malicious actors. The problem are the incentives of the system. Yeah. But if you think about it, and I always tell this to family and friends, because that's that's what you do as a Bitcoiner, right? You're the crazy person always talking about crazy stuff. Um, I was telling like, have you done like the math of what can you afford when you retired 60 something in yeah, your pension? Good one. Have you done, have you done the math? Like how is your lifestyle going to be? What could you afford? Just do the math. Let's do it quickly. <laughs> and when you do it, it's like, they start waking up like, Oh my God. So you, you say like, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the supermarket and that's it with that money. Yeah, probably. And that's when they start waking up. Um, in my personal experience was I got rewarded um, because I created value and I sold brands and companies. I got rewarded. My fear was, all right, where do I put this? Stock market? Um, no. In the bank? Mm, no. Um, what? Gold? No, it doesn't make sense for a millennial, um, especially when you have a lifestyle where I move around from different countries. So it's, it's insane. And the only <laughs> real option yeah. is Bitcoin. And it just makes sense. And I, I'll be honest with you. I don't even care if it falls down 50% because what I'm doing, it's in the long run. Like I won't use that until I'm, in 20, 2034, maybe, if I have to, because I've, I've done things um, this time the right way. I saved, I have a, a few cash to burn for every month. I have my savings and then you feel relaxed and then you read and then you meet Bram and then you're on Twitter and then you're doing a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> love it, love it. So... <laughs> When when you discovered Bitcoin, you didn't get into it fully. You just you know bought those bought those two. Can you remember maybe why you didn't go into it more at that moment? But yeah. also, what made you like really get it? Was that re only the the number went up thing, or or was there something bigger? No. So so question number one. Uh, I didn't pay attention because I didn't have the time to pay attention. And I think that's what happens to most people. Like I was so worried about literally surviving, moving forward. Um, I, I always believed in having a family. So I was, I was thinking about, am I going to meet the right person? I'm not going to like normal things that you should do a certain age. I was doing that. Yeah. So why, in what world would I just, Oh, I'm going to study Bitcoin. I was not even interested. I didn't have the problem that Bitcoin solves. Well, I had the problem, but I didn't know I had the problem at the, at the, at the moment. Um, and then when I saw, when I saw the Bitcoin that I, I bought and then I saw the price, no, it was not. Well, I can't lie. Yeah. I saw the price and I was like, like really amazed. Like what happened here? But it was not that, that what intrigued me. What intrigued me was it's still there. <clears throat> it's still there. It's surviving. What is this? Because I was always a little bit curious about gold and the concept of gold and how you can save for the future. And I read tons of books about Indian culture and they provide that in their weddings because they're literally expressing in gold. I want to give you time in the future. That's literally what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is amazing. Like it's, it's, it's something that every culture should do. So hopefully whoever's listening to this, if you're going to a wedding, please 
give them Bitcoin and literally tell them time for the future couple. Enjoy your time. All right. Build a family, yeah. whatever you want to do, travel, but Love that. for the future, you're just giving time. Um, I just went to a wedding, one of my best friends in Barcelona, and I did exactly this. And he felt amazing because I told him, like, I'm giving you time. All right. Who can give you time as a present? No one. So, well, not no one. Every single Bitcoiner in the world can do that. And that's amazing. So going back to my curiosity, I was like, it's still there. Number went up. Can't lie about that. Um, but it's still there. No one took it. It's working. What is this? Mm. And then I, my first couple of hours, the comparison that went, came into my head was gold, literally digital gold. So I saw it as a store of value because at that moment, no one was paying anything with Bitcoin, like no lightning, no nothing. It was weird. He talked about it. Nobody knew. Um, to, for me, it has always been a store of value. And until this day, it has been, even for my, my new ventures, new businesses, I just started a new one. In the balance sheet, there's Bitcoin. Love that. Why? Yeah. And it makes sense because well, if, you, if you're not familiar with the startup world, what you normally do is you have an idea, you go pitch it. You get a, an angel investor or some seed money, right? And you give your equity. Amazing. All right, cool. Maybe you can grab that money and put it in Bitcoin and never, ever ask for money again. And you own. Yeah. And you literally own your thing. Because in the meantime that you're working on your project, Bitcoin is appreciating. And once you're ready, mature enough, and the system is working or whatever product you're selling or service... Now you can fund yourself with the same Bitcoin that you put at the, at the beginning, I don't know, two, three, four years ago. So as a family, that's, yeah. that's how my wife and I run the family. Love that. I, uh, I actually have a lot of experience with early stage uh, startups. So I, I, get this, uh, I get this example. I also think, well, not how you illustrated it, I, well, it, it could change the VC landscape too because there's also people that talk about this me mechanism with real estate for example real estate development right and, and and it's similar so if you get an initial investment part of the investment you buy bitcoin you hold that you don't touch it the other part of the investment you spend to figure out you know could this idea become a company if yes then your treasury is already set for for when you're there you don't need more debt right? Investment, uh, well, debt investment, or you, you sell your stock. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a super interesting model. It's actually, I want to ask you a question. So I have a lot of experience with early stage startups and, you know, there you focus a lot on the, the problem to be solved more than the solution, right? Because most people, yeah. if you're on the investor side, they pitch the solution, right? My startup is going to do this and that, faster, cooler, smarter, whatever, all graphs go to the right and up, right? It's always a great story. <laughs> but all, all the projections are always right. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But I think what is fun in an, in an exchange like that is when you start, you know, asking them about the problem. What do you understand about the problem? Who has this problem? How big is the problem? Do people actually want to solve the problem, right? Because doing nothing is also a solution, you know, like st stuff like that. But... We know Bitcoin is the solution to fix the broken money. You and I know that. We also know that to get people to Bitcoin, we should not start pitching Bitcoin. You kind of touched upon it a bit, but what is the main problem that people need to see first? Is that the pension thing you mentioned or, or do you also have other topics that you touch? Um, I think that the main real problem um, to solve is defining money. Most people don't even know what money is. They think what they have is money, but they have a currency. It's completely different. And once, once you separate those definitions into proper words and proper meanings, I've seen eyes of people just light up, like start lighting up 
and I see their brain. Oh my God, what's going on? And then they ask the next question. So gold is money and this and that, because what, that's what people remember from history. Um, but they say, oh, I can't own gold. It's too expensive. And then you tell them, well, yes and no. And you show them a graph of gold against Bitcoin, real estate against Bitcoin, S&P 500 against Bitcoin. And then they ask, what is Bitcoin? And if they have a proper definition of what is money at this point, their eyes start fireworks because they see something that might work. And I'm not saying they're completely sold in 15, 20 minutes. No, but humans, we are here after thousands of years because of our attributes and our, one of the biggest attributes I consider in human nature is being intrigued. We're curious, right? Once you get yes. into curiosity, oh my man, hopefully you have a lean Alvin book. No, that's, that's a big one. That's like level six, but the Bitcoin <laughs> standard or the fiat standard or even Gigi's book, which is amazing. It's really simple and just give a book as a present and they will figure out what the problem is because as you said, there's different levels to this and Bitcoin solves so, so many things that it depends on the person that you're talking to. So sometimes it's really hard to get the message because you don't really know the person. You don't know what they yeah. know, what they don't know, their interests. So I always try to just go to the basic thing. Let's, let's define money. Let's define a currency. Um, and maybe let's compare time, energy, and money, and let's tie them up in a good description. And yeah. people just, people, people are not dumb. You know, I've heard people saying that people is dumb. No, people are not dumb. People don't have the time. They're not curious enough or they're not suffering enough. Find a solution, but they're not dumb. People are really mm -hmm. smart, really, really smart. They just need the, the right incentive. So yeah, I think that's, that's the main problem to solve definitions. Yeah. Do you want to stack more Bitcoin at a discount? Consider participating in a hosted mining provider like Pantheon Mining. This can potentially increase your Bitcoin holdings by 25 to 50% compared to just buying Bitcoin. Pantheon offers a hosted mining service with an electricity price of just 4 cents per kilowatt hour, well below the market rate. Plus, they handle everything for you with their white glove approach. Learn more at pantheonmining.com and discover how Bitcoin mining could work for you. Well, I think... Uh... I agree with, uh, you know, getting Bitcoin is, is not an IQ test. It's, it's an EQ or ego, ego test, right? Because even when you're smart, you cannot understand <laughs> Bitcoin. You know, some Correct. smart people don't understand Bitcoin because they are not able to challenge that ego, right? So they are, they are intelligent enough to eventually understand it, but they're so captured by the, idea that they have of money or the government or central banks or, you know, economy, whatever, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Actually. I think what you said is perfect. You want to find that one, one little opening and then show them what, what that really is. Right. So, so show them that their idea or belief in something is wrong and it's up to them to be, curious or apprehensive then right like to accept th that this is different or be like oh yeah no i don't want to touch that you're crazy whatever Co correct it's um you can't pressure people into this it, it has to be something organic natural um and they need to feel uh, a certain pressure from within or from the outside to move forward yeah but, but again, uh, yeah. I've been successful. I orange filled four boomers. So I, I wear those medals with, with, with pride. Well um, it, it was, no, it was years, but I, yeah. I did it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard. So 
again, it's just, let's talk about the basics. Let's go first principles. What is money? Yeah. Yeah. I want to read something that you shared with me beforehand because I thought it was absolutely amazing. And then I have a question <laughs> about it. You, All right. you sent me, Bitcoin has allowed me to understand time preference, purchasing power, wants versus needs. It funded my venture, ventures to add value to society, provided a great economical cushion for my family and has allowed me to really own my time, which I now invest in my kids, family, learning and creating more value to the world and not spending time speculating, losing money in a rigged stock market and trying to get ahead in a rigged system. <laughs> Fire. Love that. What I wanted Thanks. to ask is... Is this what real autonomy looks like, you think? Um, yeah. So maybe maybe the surroundings of what you just mentioned, it's it's really personal. But what I think it could resonate with everyone is owning your time. And that will allow you to do the rest. Whatever it is, whatever you like. I mean, I have a, a friend that we're the same age and he's a DJ, goes around the world and he's a Bitcoiner. And he's happy, right? It, it doesn't matter, but he feels he owns his time. And it wasn't yeah. like that 10, 10 years ago because he was not a Bitcoiner 10 years ago. He started 20, 2022 or something like that. But I think the most important message um, for me, and it's exactly what I tell my kids, and they're really small, but I'm already talking to them about everything, is that... If you don't own your time, literally own your time, you're a slave to someone else or even yourself. So it's, it's, it's complex. Um, yeah. And, and, and yeah, thank you for saying that. It was from my heart, full honesty. That's literally my life so far. And that's why I'm so grateful for Bitcoin um, because I honestly always try to debate within within myself what what would be my situation or others if Bitcoin didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. And like <laughs> same, you know, I think what you said owning your time it's funny because I always saw money as time. Like money as buying time to have the space to figure out what's next or what do I want or what do I want to learn, like create that opportunity for myself. But I never really understood it until I found Bitcoin. So, so using fiat money as a measurement stick for that, for th that how I saw m money was the wrong way to do it. So I, I yeah. thought I understood that, but not until I found the right thing to measure the time and the energy uh, with, right? And over a long enough time horizon, you see, because more people are understanding this, that, you know, they're also saving their monetary energy in Bitcoin. That is why the price, I want to stop saying price. I'm going to say exchange rate <laughs> with the other money, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, goes up because more people are going to save their monetary energy in it. But because it's a, it's a mutually beneficial system, and that's mainly because the, the finite supply, my monetary energy also went up. But I, I didn't do a lot for it, but it's just a better way to save or create time. Let's call it something like that, you know. And uh, yeah, it, that's what I have to think about when you share this, because that is... Uh, only Bitcoin taught me that, how that really is. Yeah. And, and, well, I think it's the only thing that can help you see that. Yeah. Um, and there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a really important caveat to this because owning your time, and you mentioned, you, and we all do, we associate money with time, right? But money real money is the one that you really own. Uh, with that, I want to say it doesn't matter if you have X amount of money in the bank account, X amount of money in the stock market, X amount of money, whatever those vehicles of 
money, I'm going to say this, money, because you don't own it. You really don't own it. Exactly. So yeah. you're living in a fictitious world in which you think you're in control. You think you own your time, but at any moment it, ha it can be taken away from you. And no one's going to yes. ask you questions and no one cares about the consequences except yourself and your family. So for me, Bitcoin became the go-to tool to save time and energy and really own what, I, what I've done. So I mentioned yeah. you at a certain point in this conversation. I, don't, I really don't care if it goes 50% down. I don't care because I still have it in my hand. You know, that feeling, it's what moves me to continue stacking as much as I can because I don't know, I don't know if I'm stacking minutes, hours of years, but I'm stacking and I have them in my, in my possession. And that's important. Yeah. I think the main point to make here is ownership versus property. In my language, there's not really a good distinction in words with it. I don't know how it also is in Spanish, but like ownership is like your name is on the title deed of a house or on a stock, right? Like it's an, it, it's an IOU in some sense. You, you don't really own it because, you know, in the, in, the mo in the biggest edge case, basically a government could take your house, right? Or they could... Uh, you know, they, they can mess with the neighborhood by defunding the police <laughs> as an idea, right? <laughs> and then then you you still own the house, but but it's influenced by all these all these other parties, right? And if you think about Bitcoin can be your only property, no one can tell you if you have it or you don't have it, right? Because eventually it can be in your head. It's the only true property. Besides your time, but your time is gone either by living, you know, or by spending it on, you know, doing a job or, or, or a venture. And so the best reward for your time is something that is, is just as special or unique, I would, I would say. And, and, and that is Bitcoin. Yeah. That, that is no, it. I, and, I... and like you said, yeah. No, I, I completely ahead. agree. I completely agree. As it's a, you know, um, we're lucky, and I, I met I met him now last couple of weeks. I was in Bitcoin Prague, and I I met Jack Mallers, and I told mm -hmm. him like, we're lucky to have you because I really think you're the best storyteller ever in the world so far. Personal opinion, Jack. If you see this, keep it up, but. Um, Shout out Jack Mollard. Yeah. So Jack has a particular way of saying things, but he said once and he stuck, I, I got it like in my heart. The only thing, two things that you really own is your time in Bitcoin. The rest, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fake. It's not real. Um, when he said that, it really resonated with me because not because you already know Bitcoin and this and that is because there's nothing else you can own for real. Um, and in a world that it's changing so fast, so weird, every week we have a new something. Um, today I read that Zelensky wants to end the war. And that's probably means that he's running out of money <laughs> or something like mm -hmm. that. But you don't know if that's going to hit your country tomorrow. You don't know if it's going to hit your country in 20 years or whatever you are. And in my particular case and yours, that we are parents, um, Bitcoin and owning Bitcoin, it's, it's not even for me. I'm trying to buy the time of my kids. Because I don't want them to grow and have the experiences that I had because of I didn't own my time. I didn't have it. Like, really, I didn't have it. Um, and it's not a, a thing of money. It's just I was connected to the matrix all the time. Um, so, yeah. So, I agree with you. The, the only two things that you can really own is your time and Bitcoin. And I think it's yeah. ironic, but you only own your time when you own Bitcoin. Mm. Makes sense. 
Yes. That's a good one. <laughs> well, it is, it is, yeah, that's a, that's a, that, that's, that's deep. That's a really, that's a really good one. It is true because, funny how to explain. I think it, it is because you, well, maybe it's your future time. Like when you own Bitcoin, you own your future time. Because now if you spend your time for a, re, for a fiat reward, you, you, there's already basically time stolen from, from you, right? If you take yep. the fiat, uh, a fiat reward. It's, so, it's deep. Yeah. It's really deep. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then if you transform it into Bitcoin, it's like the only possibility to regain that time back basically and yeah, in some cases even I, more even I, even more time yeah as i mentioned to you before um i got curious again because my 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 mind went into i need to recover that time i blew up yeah um, exactly and today today i can tell you i recovered my time like i feel i recovered my time yeah. not not in the past yeah. but in the future i won't be I, I i won't have to work as much because i got that time back and yes again it's deep but without bitcoin i I don't i don't know um i don't know i think last example about this uh in america for example 20 percent of all tax income is now spent on paying interest on the national debt so one day a week you work to pay to help your government pay an interest payment on money they borrowed and spent in a time where you probably did not benefit from it. That's why. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, and again, um, in my case, I always go back to my kids. Well, yeah, they're already, my kids are, would have to work that day to pay for what they're spending now. Exactly. Well, it's like what you are spending now or your government is spending now on something that you don't, you don't know, right? Like they're yeah. going to grow up and then say, um, and what did I got from that? Yes. Nothing, nothing. but <laughs> Monday you work for the government. Good job. Yes. Well, that is, I, I wonder if that's, uh, if, if you can like calculate it in, in some way, like on which loan is America paying, you know, uh, which loan does the first payment go to, right? Like what's the oldest loan still uh, being paid off uh, in in America, well, I don't know. Might be in the nineties, right? Almost, Might I, be in I, the nineties. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I, I don't know. At thirty five trillion dollars, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's insane. It's just insane. Yeah. Um, That's well. I, I don't know if you can even calculate that. Is, but yeah, it is what it is. Again, I don't know either. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. We have Bitcoin, so hopefully, people that listen yes. this and they're not into Bitcoin yet. Please, please get into it. Um, figure it out. Educate yourself. Um, Michael Saylor says like a th- ten thousand hours or something like that. Um, people, normal people, don't have ten thousand hours to do that. Although they should, but at least go figure out what money is. At least. Yeah, I agree. So now that you are fully, now that you fully get Bitcoin and are all into it. Do you think it's risky? No, completely the opposite. Um, hmm. Completely the opposite. I feel safer than ever. Um, and again, going back to, I, I, I have it. <laughs> it's with me. Um, anything else? I, I think it's extremely, like the only thing that I, I really believe people should own um, besides Bitcoin if they have the opportunity, if the system allows it, it's it's a home, maybe. Yeah. But after that, I think that the world, the whole world, is so risky. And a, a, a good way of saying this with with more inf- information. So the the world is super risky. I hope. Well, I guess you agree with this. Every day changes. It's so uncertain that you don't know what's going to happen because of the fiat incentives. But every every day, you, it's guaranteed that every 10 minutes you get a new block. It, mm-hmm. That's not risky at all. At all. 
that's safe, that's constant, that's a standard. But the rest, I don't know if, I don't know if Bezos is going to do something tomorrow by, by Amazon or Elon goes crazy or any bank CEO, I don't know. So no, extremely, extremely safe, but it gets, you need to get to a certain level, not of comfort with the asset, a certain level of education of the asset to, um, to feel safe. You yes. know, so, so some people think it's all oh, by more and more and more, but they don't educate themselves more. Those are the ones weak handed that when it drops 15%, they sell because you really don't understand what you used to have because you already sold it. So yeah. in my case, my library is full of Austrian economics, Bitcoin books, the good ones and the bad ones, because you need to read it all. And then I'm a super fan of this podcast because it's amazing, to be honest. I've learned a lot from your podcast um, and from your Twitter. So that's why I, I answer and I just, hey guys, hey, what's up? I didn't even know it was one person. Like I'm here if you need to talk to someone <laughs> yeah. and you have space. So. So glad, oh, glad, glad to have the opportunity again. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. I, um, I, I love that you also don't see it as risky. I think it, I do agree. It comes at a certain level of understanding. I think it's more about, for me, I'm a pretty, I am entrepreneurial, but I'm a pretty risk first person, I think in general. And I think, Bitcoin for me is the most rational thing that I can do just because all the other stuff, I just, I, I, I'm not able to understand. It's too vague, not rational, very abstracted, like all these things. So it doesn't give me, it, it, yeah. So it, it, and it also doesn't give me the opportunity to fully fed it myself, basically. And I, I think that's. Yeah, the simplest explanation I, I could give why I don't think it's risky. It's, um, you know, even with the halving, same thing. What we celebrate with the halving is not like, ooh, less Bitcoin in circulation, but it, <laughs> it, it still works as intended. And all the actors in the network adopt that, how it is uh, supposed to work as, as intended. That is what is, is celebrated and shown publicly that the, the people who secure the network agree to the rules of the network, right? And therefore yeah. it stays decentralized and secure. And that's the main thing. Nobody, nobody, you know, the incentives are aligned. Nobody's gonna mess with it. And that is what gives you more certainty and does less risk. I, I, I agree. Um, I, I think you just said something that it's really deep. What we're celebrating is that everyone not, not accepts and, and, and enjoys that it's working as it's intended and it's not, it's not changed because that's what we want. Less risky yeah. things, more things to trust, things that are slow, but really, really safe. Um, I can't even imagine if you tell the banking industry, every four years, we're going to cut your, your fees at half <laughs> yes. and everybody, yeah. and everybody says, yeah. Oh, okay, let's do it. Oh, sure. Sure. I think I that's a very simple, that. very good example. That's a very good and simple example because they would never do that. Right. Uh, maybe to add to it, I like that it resonates with you. It's not only it, what we celebrate is that everyone who wants to agrees to the rules again. Exactly. You know, it's the, it's, it's the rules, not rulers. So, Hey, the, here are the rules of this money system. Do you still agree? If yes, mine a block with this block amount. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, and, it. and figure out how to get more efficient energy figure out how to get more efficient machines, try to go get stranded energy from whatever it is in the world. Um, yep. And yes, 
it's a, I mean, mining is such a complex business to run and they're still doing it and they will still do it, but it's amazing. And again, you see the comparison with the banks, no one complains, everybody's happy. It's the game. Yeah. It's the game. Yeah. Um, and the incentive, as you mentioned, is make it work. And if not, it doesn't matter. Someone will. Yes. So they deliberately agree to follow the rules again somewhat. But as you said, they take all the consequences that come with that choice as well. Exactly. That should, that, that should be a signal for the right person, I would say. Right? That's because what uh, you say, see now, a lot of miners are struggling, you know, they're struggling because they have to figure out, okay, how do I optimize my business? But they, the, the people still in this game, the miners still in this game, they see enough opportunity to keep, to keep going. You know, that's okay. a real free market in that sense as well. Yeah. And again, another beautiful thing about Bitcoin, because it connects with reality in the sense that, um, there's consequences to your actions and to the rules and you can go to many history points in life but let's go back to 2008 2009 where the consequence is i'll bail you out <laughs> yeah. and it's it's just insane so yeah risky no bram it's not risky um risky is the dollar risky is the euro risk is the yen that as we speak, is about to implode. But no, Bitcoin's going to be there. Um, again, the, the best advice for everyone is learn what money is and stack whatever you can. Because as I said, you and I, no one knows if you're stacking minutes, hours, weeks, months, or years of your life ahead. No one knows, but you're stacking time. So just do your best as, as you can. And that's it. Yes. Yes. Full yes. So is, is there a common, uh, when you also, when you talk to other people, you hear misconceptions, people have an idea or they say they have an idea. What's, what's the most common misconception about Bitcoin that you would wish to debunk? Well, that's, that's a deep one because <laughs> there's plenty. Um, it depends on who you talk to. Uh, but I, I would say most people that I talk to initially, they're so scared about decentralization versus centralization. Um, they think that things have to be centralized to be working out. And if it's decentralized and there's no one entity, how does this work? And there's a myth, and I think it's part of the incentives of the fiat system that makes us think that centralization is safer than decentralization. And it's, it's a really difficult one to debunk because where do you go? There's no good examples except what open source projects, which is a little bit technical. And what else is decentralized in the world? Like really decentralized. So it's, it's, it's a really hard one that I always try to find answers on. And I, I, as a Bitcoiner, I understand why it's important, but how do you debunk that centralization is better than decentralization when yeah. absolutely everything around you is centralized? It's, it's very, really hard. very good point. I don't have an answer either, to be honest. Uh, I, I agree. Yeah, every, every fun, everything you know is probably is centralized. Everything that you trust yeah. is centralized. Uh, yes, correct. I, I do like the... Ah, that's a good one. I'm thinking about like Byzantine general problem, if you can explain that simpler. But... The, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck, yeah. Um okay, good one. We'll leave that open, but I think that <laughs> I think that's a great one. That's a great one. So, uh I wanted to ask you, you know, you went to medical school. Uh you became a surgeon. 
uh, it's interesting. I did two years of medical school, actually, and I quit. It's really hard, by the way. So uh, props that you finished. I didn't finish. Um, Thank you. But it was it was really hard, and I was like kind of stuck somewhere. But at one point, I realized the only thing I can become here. I always thought like I would be a good doctor. I would enjoy helping people. But at one point, I I didn't see the recognition or something mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it, it was like you either work in a hospital or you teach. Well, that was basically it. And of course, like in, in like year five or six or four, even you have to like work in a hospital and learn, you know, and it would literally be, I learned like, okay, you could be studying in a certain city and then a city 200 kilometers away would have a spot and you would just have the choice. Do you go there or not? And if you say no, then you just wait until the next spot, you know, and I, I don't know. It was just, it didn't feel like people were thankful for the people wanting to become a doctor. And I always thought, you know, doctors are pretty important. And I didn't, I, I, I it was more like that I had to be happy to study to become a doctor than that, for example, the university was happy that I decided that I wanted to become a doctor. I don't know. It just felt really off. And when I got a little bit stuck, I was like, I don't, I don't think this is for me. I, I don't, I don't like the spot that I'm eventually putting myself in felt like painting myself in a corner or something. Mm -hmm. I wonder yep. if you recognize the same, but um, I wanted I, to ask you, how do you now feel about the education system going to university, et cetera? Well, I have a strong opinion about it. Um, I, I really think that there's just a few real careers that you need to go to universities or college. Just a few of them. Medicine is one. Maybe law. Maybe. I don't. I, now with AI coming into the world, I don't even know. Um, but again, it's it's fueled by fiat incentives. So with that, I'll give you an example. You don't need a hundred thousand doctors to be graduated a year in one country. You just don't need that. That's why there's yeah. so many doing doing Uber. So what that means is that the university got greedy, and they just let's make more money because everybody wants to be a doctor, and not because of the right reasons, which is my experience. Yeah. I would say seven out of 10, it's not there because of the right reasons. But the, the feeling that you just described, I, I felt it too. Um, it's a career that if you're really, really, really passionate and you, you really want to help people and, and with this, I, I'm trying to make the incentives right. It's not about making a lot of money and it's not about status. It's about helping people. Yeah. All right, go for it. But honestly, that's that's minor, the minority of the people. Um, there's really great doctors, but if you don't do it for the right reasons, then, or you're not aligned with what I just said, then you feel trapped because it's a system that it's it's their incentives are not there for you to want to thrive. Not really. Yeah, it's like literally boot camp for years it, it makes no sense like you're not even enjoying it it's like you can't sleep <laughs> for years yeah. um so if you're if you're not really into it that's what starts happening um i i had the same feeling i felt trapped i was I, my my priority of being a, a parent having a family was really really clear since a young age and i knew that is one or the other because I'm not a mediocre. I'm going to do it the right way. So that's when I jumped into, I always had this entrepreneurial spirit. So I just jumped into entrepreneurship without even knowing what I was doing. And now I look back and I'm, that's, that's step one for me to find Bitcoin. But mm -hmm. not only that, I found my wife too. And I got my kids and then I got to travel. And I got lucky to meet you. So life, life yeah. is, is interesting. 
I love that. I, I, I've had people that, that sometimes ask like, oh, don't you think it's a pity that you didn't do it? But I, I love your explanation because I think I always, I don't know why. So what I just said, I thought I would have been a good doctor, but I never, um, before I, I got in, right? I always thought like, I want to become a doctor, but I have never been able to answer the question why. So hmm. maybe... I, I don't know where that came from, but I would agree with you that, you know, if, because there were really good people that were really internally motivated, I think for the right reasons to become a doctor, apparently I was not. So I'm happy that I, I also figured that out, but I, I never understood actually why I wanted to become a doctor. Well, food for thought. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you, but, you'll, yeah, you'll get but, the answers sooner rather than later. Um, I mean, yeah. li life, life is um, unpredictable, um, especially when you're young. I mean, I applaud that you had the intention because from day one, it's extremely hard. Um, day two, uh, well, I was in... Uh surgery uh, in in like the room where we had to cut like legs and stuff and uh, that was day two i think they put you in there but yeah yeah well um my um, my pa my passion was the burn unit um i love working in the burn burn unit but yeah it takes a toll it depends on what you want and yeah my my feeling at the moment was i'm I think I chose this because of the wrong reasons. Um, yeah. And then you need to pivot and be brave and jump to the cliff and hope you can fly or get a parachute while you're falling down. But that's the way it is. Love that. All right. Two short questions to finish up. Oh, well, de depends on your answer. But I wanted to ask you how... <laughs> You went to the, the, the BTC Prague conference. I think you've been to, to others as well, right? So you yeah. are getting more informed about all the stuff that's going on. How do you see the future for Bitcoin? Um, well, I think the next 10 years are going to be hard because the world is waking up. And when I say the world is the matrix, the beast, whatever we're against it's waking up. So we need as Bitcoiners to, and these are not my words, are my father-in-law. So he has really smart words most of the time. Um, and he told me we need to become better communicators of what Bitcoin is. If we want Bitcoin to succeed, we need to give people a better explanation of what's going on in a smarter way without poking the beast because they already have all the media, everything against us. So I think as millennials, young people with a bit of expertise so far, I think the, the biggest problem for Bitcoin would be if we don't communicate the message properly. I think that's the, the biggest risk. If we start fighting, if we're not smart enough, if we're not politically smart to give the message, to infiltrate the places that we need to go. Uh, that's the only thing that really concerns me. Not that Bitcoin is not going to be successful. Is that we might get delayed 20 years, 30 years. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, why would we do that? Let's, let's try to do it the best way and let's try to get Bitcoin everywhere the best way possible. And hopefully the matrix loves Bitcoin too. So it makes it easier. Um, but I've seen, I've seen the change. I, I mean, I see in America, um, what's going on. People are talking about Bitcoin. They're trying to pass laws, whatever that means. At least they're talking about it in the right way. And whatever you are in the world, I think that's, that's the key. You, we need to communicate a better message, a simpler message to normies so they can wake up. Because what I really feel is that we already crossed the bridge. So we're Bitcoiners. We're already on the other side. But what I really no. fear is that, mo that a lot of people don't get the message because they don't have the time. They don't understand it. 
um, the language barriers, a lot of things that we need to fix or work on. And then they become the users of CBDCs and fiat and we're on the other side and that's how life is. And that yeah. what that's 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 not the future I want for my kids, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's also important to emphasize more how big this battle is. You know, I think back to the beginning of this conversation, money is a tool. Money is a tool for communication. If I do something for you and we shake hands on a certain reward, certain amount of units of, you know, the currency that we use, where, whatever, that is what eventually makes up the world that is what creates all of our incentives right and it creates the incentive uh, about or the incentive on if we will actually deliver value or not or that we are going to corrupt some system that we're exchanging this value in etc and so it is actually the biggest topic that we can probably talk about and yeah, I always use the example if if the bread was 25 cents in 1960s and it's $5 now or euros, whatever, you know, which side do you think is winning? For me, it's pretty clear, but I think that shows how big th this is. And uh, I agree that we should not stop talking about it. It is not inevitable. And we still have to reach lots and lots and lots of people. Correct. So, yeah, couldn't, couldn't agree more. All right, last question, and I ask everyone the same question, All right. which is, what is a core belief you'll never let go? Um, uh, one that, that it took me a while to understand and really appreciate, which is humbleness. Um, it's really, really important to be humble in life. I just met a really important person in the Bitcoin Prague conference. I got the, the opportunity to ask a question. Um, how do you stay humble? And the answer was because there's always someone above me and there will always be. So it makes no sense to believe that I'm superior to anyone else. Like everyone yes. has someone above them and everyone has someone below them. In whatever terms you want to discuss, like knowledge, money, status, whatever it is, more Bitcoin, less Bitcoin. You know, it's it's always like that. So, and, and what he said is, and to stay humble, you just need to focus on what makes you happy and forget everything else. It doesn't matter. Just be happy, stay humble. Um, and I got a phrase since a long time ago, which makes everyone laugh, but sticks with everyone, is that, ego is not your amigo so it's it's important yeah, to understand that. that like ego is not your amigo so whenever you're doing anything in your life even from getting dressed to a business talking to someone just ask yourself am i doing this because i want to feed my ego because definitely that guy is not my amigo so try to not go that route and go the other route of humbleness because the message will be different. They will approach different. The, the, the system will, and the energies in the system will work differently. And then you become a better person, which by the way, makes you a better Bitcoiner and a happier person. So win, win. So just remember ego is not your amigo. Stay humble. Stack sats, basically. Boom. <laughs> great ending man great ending <laughs> thank, thank I, you, thank uh, you. I think for your first podcast appearance ever you did amazing and, <laughs> thank you uh, appreciate I think, it uh, lots of people yeah I think uh, we have a little lag I think but uh, I think a lot of people will be inspired by your story and I think it's really cool that you came on to share it uh, also very cool. First, you wanted to do it anonymous, but now you're here. I think uh, that deserves a lot of respect. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, I will I will link to your X account in the show notes so people can follow you. Cool. And uh, well, I hope we get to meet uh, in real life, man. For sure. Thanks again and stay in touch. Appreciate it. Thank you.
I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, check out some of my other episodes to learn why Bitcoin is the most important subject you must understand and adopt. If you want, you can follow and connect with me on Twitter X. I'm at Bram K, that's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you have any feedback or questions, just reach out. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for our next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. 